Hi, I'm Codex, and I broke the game a little bit. Let me explain. The Chaos Bane set bonus from using three Unholy Domination shards allows you to generate soul fragments, and once you get 15, you get Chaos Bane, which is a massive primary stat buff. Generating soul fragments faster means getting more Chaos Banes, which is obviously better than getting fewer Chaos Banes. Soul fragments work off of a procs per minute system, and they can proc off of anything that is flagged as a cast in the combat log. Now, it's been fairly well known that abilities such as Battle Shout and Spell Reflect can proc Soul Fragments, but what has not been widely noticed is that Pummel can proc them too. This was particularly interesting to me because it's an ability that's off the GCD and does no damage and costs no rage. Also, as far as I understood it, it wasn't really treated like being an attack by the game in order to not incentivize players to macro all of their off GCD things in order to farm Trinket procs. Though that could just be a delusion that my brain invented because I can't seem to find any blue post talking about this, even though I swear it was a thing at one point. Anyway, when I noticed this, it made me wonder, is there literally no filter on what cast can proc soul fragments? Is there some other cast that I can do that is off the GCD, cost no rage, and would proc soul fragments? The answer to that is, yes there are. There are a lot, actually. And it's pretty bad, because there are some really degenerate things that you can do to take advantage of this lack of a filter on what can proc soul fragments. Because I want to show you that there's no magic behind the curtain when it comes to discovering bugs and exploits and things like that, I'm going to walk you through exactly how I found everything that I did and how much of an impact this exploit has. Let's get started. Once I noticed that soul fragments were procking from Pummel, I set out to see if there was a filter on what cast could proc soul fragments. And so I set out to see if I could find an innocuous cast that I could spam in combat. Now, something that I had noticed previously was that whenever I log in, if I look at the combat log, I'll see this. Whenever you equip the shirt, it gives you a buff, and that counts as a cast. And, well, for whatever reason, whenever you log in, that's a lot of casts. Now, unfortunately, this only happens at login, and more importantly, you can't equip shirts in combat. So this wasn't an option. But that's also when I noticed something right beside it. Find Herbs was a combat log event too. And when you turn on Find Herbs or Find Minerals, that's a cast. Could I proc Soul Fragments by clicking Find Herbs? Well, I went to Corthia to test this, and this was the result. All right, so I got rid of my Condensed Animosphere, so that wouldn't be a source of me procking Soul Fragments. Check this out. So if we open up the combat log, if you cast... uh find herbs or find minerals uh, well that's a cast that's a cast okay so in theory that should proc soul fragments and it kind of appears that it does so uh let's let's do this like I'm not getting touched. So this was confirmation to me that literally any cast can proc soul fragments, as there's no way that there would be some whitelisting system that would be like, ah, oh, yes, we will include all of the player's abilities and also find herbs. Now, if we were going to have to have that drop down up and then spam click the checkbox in order to get this to work, then in practical terms, this would be useless. So I would need to create a macro to cast find herbs. And this was actually one of the major hurdles that I had. You see, despite you casting Find Herbs, your character technically doesn't know the spell Find Herbs. So doing slash cast Find Herbs doesn't work. After a bunch of Googling, trying to figure out if somebody had a macro to do exactly what I wanted to do, I ended up just finding a list of all of the slash commands, and then I found the slash click command, which, well, simulates clicking on some widget. After that, I used the add-on called Move Anything to turn on the frame stack, which would allow me to see all of the widgets that are underneath my cursor. And so using that, I was able to figure out the widget name for the buttons in this drop-down menu. With this, I could create a macro that sends the command to click that option that corresponds to the herbs in that drop-down menu. And specifically for me, that was slash click, drop-down menu list one, button six. So now I had a way that I could spam track and untrack find herbs, and that could be macroed into abilities. But we can take this further. Find minerals is also a cast. And for me, that was drop down list one, button seven. Find timber from wad was also a cast two, and that was drop down list one, button three. The other options in that drop down menu for finding various elements out in the world were not cast, and so they did not work. Now, if you want to do this yourself, the button numbers for you might vary 
depending on your professions, so you might have to do a bit of trial and error to adjust the button numbers as needed. Now, all three of these track whatever spells have a cooldown of 1.5 seconds, but here's the kicker. The cooldown isn't shared, so you can spam all three of them and farm casts. So I made a macro to test exactly that. It had the three lines to toggle find herbs, find minerals, and find timber, and then I got into combat and started spam clicking it. This is what happened. Now, that's pretty bad on its own. But wait, there's more. When I play Fury, because I like to annoy people, I tend to macro slash train into Rampage, because it's the only emote in the game that makes noise and doesn't leave a trace of you using it in the chat log or combat log. In that macro, I also use an item called Squeaky Bat. Using this item plays a noise that nearby players can hear. It is quite quiet, so it's not as obnoxious as slash train, but it's off the GCD and is usable in combat. When I was making this macro to spam find herbs and whatnot, I remembered about that slash train macro. And so that made me wonder, is using a squeaky bat a cast? And why, yes it is. Now then, the obvious question is, can that cast proc soul fragments? And well, yes it can. Holy crap. Look at that. Oh my god. So, now we know that we can add slash use squeaky bat to our macro. Now, at this point, I was thinking, what other things are out there that we could maybe leverage with this? What about toys? Well, there are lots of toys that are considered casts, and many of them are usable in combat. Now, I don't have a large collection of toys, but the most viable option that I was able to find was the bondable sinstone toy. This toy is instant, it is flagged as being a cast, it has a cooldown of only 10 seconds, and is usable in combat. One potential downside to using this toy is that it will stink up your chat log when it whispers you. But that can be alleviated simply by adding a line to Cancel Aura, the buff that it gives you called Sinstone Bond. Now, there are lots of other toys and things that you could macro in, but they do tend to be much longer cooldowns, so their overall benefit wouldn't be very much, and eventually you're going to start running into the character limit on your macros. So, anyway, what I did was I created macros to tie all of these things into Mortal Strike and Overpower. This would allow me to spam them in combat, which should help me generate soul fragments faster. Before talking about the impact that these macros have, let's take a moment to consider how soul fragment generation actually works so that we can temper our expectations of the results. Soul fragments have an internal cooldown of 500 milliseconds. This means that when we spam this macro, we could never get more than one soul fragment per button press. However, because we are basically adding more dice rolls, that means that overall, more button presses will result in generating a soul fragment. So just how much of an impact does this have on soul fragment generation? To try and answer this question, I went and did LFR Sylvanas twice, once with these macros and once without. Without the macros, the fight lasted 13 minutes and 23 seconds, and during that time I generated 157 soul fragments and got 6 chaos banes. Now, if you take the encounter duration and divide it by the number of soul fragments I generated, that will tell you that I was effectively generating one soul fragment every 5.11 seconds. Now, the kill where I did use the macros lasted 15 minutes and 30 seconds, and during that time I generated 208 soul fragments and got 8 chaos banes. This equated to getting a soul fragment every 4.47 seconds. Now, 4.47 versus 5.11 might not seem like much, but that's actually a huge difference. Because using this macro, I was generating soul fragments 12.6% faster. And honestly, the difference in how it feels to play with the macros versus without the macros is night and day. It is very much noticeably faster. Without the macros, I was averaging 1 KS Bane every 133 seconds. Whereas with the macros, I was averaging 1 every 116 seconds. And remember, I got this benefit without providing anything to the encounter. Also, I did this testing before I found out about using the Bondable Sinstone toy, so that would likely push it closer to being 13% faster fragment generation and potentially even higher.
Now, look, as cool as it was figuring this out and seeing how well it works, this is going to have to get fixed. I have notified Blizzard, and at least as of the time that I'm recording this video, I have not gotten a response back. Initially, my gut feeling was that this fell into the category of being a clever, albeit undesirable, use of game mechanics. And at that point, I would have liked to believe that Blizzard wouldn't ban people for doing this. However, after I found out about the bondable sinstone usage and just saw how bloated my macros were getting, and the realization that that opened the door for using other toys to get added to the macro, it really started to dawn on me just how degenerate this system is. And now I'm on the side of this being treated like a full-on exploit that could be bannable. You've got to decide for yourself how likely you think it is for Blizzard to consider this bannable, and based on those odds, whether or not you're willing to play those odds to risk getting banned. For me personally, I use these macros in two LFR Sylvanas kills to test them out, but I'm not going to be using these macros in Mythic, at least until Blizzard confirms that this is okay, which I don't think that they will. Anyway, for those of you mad lads crazy enough to risk the ban, go get some fat parses while this is still doable. For the rest of you, tell me why my opinions are dumb. And lastly, I just want to say thank you for watching this video and subscribe for more.